Hey guys, welcome back. Um, this is going to be 20.2 Evolutionary Patterns and Processes. Um, so let's zoom through the learning objectives. All right, so macroevolution and cladistics, right? We've looked at um, cladograms, right? You should be able to read those. Um, Aves uh, is a clade that you have seen before, right? And Aves contain the birds. Um, but if you look, Aves contains not only modern birds, but it also contains Archaeopteryx. So some of these clades um, contain both living and extinct animals. So when we look at patterns of extinction, okay, we tend to see that at the end of these periods, we see a mass extinction. Um, so at the end of the Ordovician, there was a extinction. Um, in the late Devonian, there was actually a couple mass extinctions. Um, early the end of the Permian, there was a huge extinction. Um, same with the Triassic and the Cretaceous, right? So typically the ends of these um, periods are marked by some kind of extinction event or massive change in the environment. So the rate of evolution. So why did Darwin think evolution was a gradual process? Um, why are horseshoe crabs an example of a species in a state of equilibrium? How is punctuated equilibrium different from gradualism? And when might rapid evolution take place? So um, we think about a evolution as a gradual process, okay? Um, the reason he thought that was because we can see a lot of the different stages in between. Um, we also know this does not happen during our lifetime. Um, and we can see millions of years of fossil evidence, right? Um, why are horseshoe crabs an example of a species in a state of equilibrium? Well, if we look at ancient, um, fossils, we can see fossils are very, very, very similar, if not identical to horseshoe crabs. So um, there is fossil evidence showing that they really haven't changed much. Okay. Um, punctuated equilibrium, different from gradualism. So that is a big change in a you know, very small period of time. Um, and you can have many big changes, you know, in small periods of time over a long period of time. And that would be different than gradual changes over that period of time. Um, and then when might rapid evolution take place? Well, when there is a major, major pressure on the organisms, right? We've talked about how evolution requires pressure, um, which is why humans really aren't evolving, okay? Um, and then it also requires the strongest to survive. Yet another reason humans are not evolving. Um, so these are the kind of questions you should be able to answer. Um, let's continue here. All right, so gradualism, gradualism involves a slow, steady change in a particular line of uh, descent, where punctuated equilibrium involves stable periods interrupted by rapid changes, right? So it stays the same, and then there's big change. It stays the same, big change. I wonder if I can make these questions go away. Covering up my diagram. Bear with me one minute here. All right, so I got those pesky questions to go away. So now you can see um, gradualism. We're changing um, colors here very slowly, steadily over time. Whereas punctuated, we're seeing massive changes, right? We're going from light blue, it's going to branch into, or from dark blue into light blue and into pink. Um, and then we see we go from the light blue to green and then the green to the yellow. There's no slow change over time, whereas over here you can see that going from this light blue um, to the yellow, that we have many different shades in between the light blue and the yellow. All right, adaptive radiation. So adaptive radiation is the process by which one organism or one species of organisms can branch out and become many, many different. So for example, um, dinosaurs in the Cretaceous underwent adaptive radiation um, and created all the different types of dinosaurs, you know, that were found on our planet. Um, when the dinosaurs went extinct, the mammals then underwent adaptive radiation and were to, able to evolve into all these different, um, many wonderful different types of mammals that are found on our planet. Right. Convergent evolution are things evolving to be more similar. Okay, so for example, all these things have one thing in common, right? 
and that is wings. So you can see that they all evolved wings, but all the wings are different. So if you look here, um, this is not Archaeopteryx, um, but it might be like a pterodon or something like that. Um, its wing is very different than a butterfly's wing, right, and evolved very differently. Um, bats are mammals. Uh, their wings are very different than any of these, right? Um, and last but not least, birds. Um, birds are probably the closest related to this guy down here, uh, but still very, very different wings, very different functions, um, but they all evolved wings. Coevolution is where two processes or two species evolve in response to changes in each other over time. So they're essentially adapting to small changes in one another and evolving because they are becoming more suited to each other. So it's kind of a very beautiful um, relationship between two organisms. All right, we're going to stop it there for 20.3. Um, go ahead and do the Pearson content, take that little quiz, um, and then I will meet you back here for 20.3.